Roy and Manuel are following the geological clues left by these ancient marine rocks deep into the mountains. All along the path, shafts have been driven into the earth. They have reached La Taca, a major source of Dominican amber. Some of these hand-dug shafts are up to 60 meters deep. Inside, the humidity is stifling. Temperatures can reach 40 degrees centigrade. For the miners, digging for amber is back-breaking and dangerous work. Tropical rains are frequent and the tunnels quickly flood. The ceiling of the shaft has no support and could collapse at any moment. Lataka has claimed the lives of several miners. Most of these men have seen their friends killed or injured. Yet the quest for amber drives them on. They ignore the dangers. The mine can yield several kilos a day, much of it containing fossils. Chunks of raw amber are often no more than a few centimeters long. The dirt and darkness make it hard for Roy to see if there are any valuable fossils inside. In the mining village nearby, Roy makes one final deal before heading home. Amber is considered a semi-precious stone even without fossils. Some he will fashion into jewelry. Some he will sell to other collectors. When they return to New York, the amber hunters will travel back in time to the age of the dinosaurs. The American Museum of Natural History in New York, where the real amber hunters come face to face with the fictional world of Jurassic Park. David Grimaldi's dream is to use amber to reconstruct the extinct worlds of the distant past. Fascinated by bugs as a boy, he is now a world authority on extinct insects, examining thousands of pieces of amber a year for new species. It never gets boring. I mean, it's, it's almost an obsession going through this material. Um, uh, the thrill never stops. And um, I've seen hundreds of thousands of pieces of Dominican amber. And when you find something new you've ever seen, that you haven't ever seen before, it's still thrilling. Roy, Manuel, how are you? Good, Dave, how are you? See you fine. Roy's return marks another round in the ongoing quest for a new discovery. What did you get, Roy? I think we've got something special here. Oh, excellent. Roy has brought back 2,000 pieces. But only David knows if Roy's hunches were right. These stunning pieces contain more than just fossils. They capture the drama of life and death 20 million years ago. This gecko lizard obviously fought to stay alive as the resin crept over it. An x-ray reveals its spine is broken in several places, powerful testimony to its instinct for survival. As the stricken gecko struggled desperately to free itself, it broke its back, then perished. Naturalists have long been fascinated by the properties of amber, but few realize just how important the fossils were. Only recently has amber's full potential been realized. Technology has revealed a level of preservation that was unexpected. Uh, soft tissues, um, things like muscles and organs are intact in these things. Uh, they're, they're dried out but it's beautifully embalmed. I mean, ancient Egyptian morticians would have been envious of this kind of embalming. 
The ancestors of tiny creatures like this ant and this primeval millipede are among the oldest life forms on Earth. In fact, David Grimaldi believes bugs are fundamental to the story of life. For scientists like myself who are interested in the study, the history, the evolution of life, insects are the natural thing to study. They're the most diverse organisms on Earth, the most abundant kind of animals on Earth. And they're also among the earliest land animals. In those terms, insects are evolutionarily probably the most successful life form on our planet. Although we like to think mankind dominates our planet, the insects truly rule the Earth. Their reign began 440 million years ago. No other creatures can compete with them. From the poles to the tropics, they thrive on land and burrow deep underground. They have taken to water and they fill the air. Close up, they look like terrifying creatures from some alien world. Yet, they live among us. What this is a, is a um, small piece of Dominican amber with an inclusion of a common stingless bee, uh, Proplobea dominicana, in it. These are opposite halves of a, of a stingless bee. And, um, Grimaldi is on the threshold of paleontology's final frontier. With an electron microscope, he is hunting for fossilized tissues, cells and molecules in a piece of amber. Enlarged 20,000 times, the spongy brain tissue in this long extinct bee becomes clearly visible. Air sacs lie crumpled like a used parachute. Clumps of pollen from an unknown plant surround the tip of its tail. Seeing such spectacular preservation, Grimaldi faced a tantalizing possibility. If individual cells survive, could DNA, the genetic code within them, also survive? Even more intriguing, could the blood in this bloated tick contain the DNA of its long extinct victim? In Jurassic Park, scientists used blood from a mosquito to clone the dinosaurs. But extracting DNA from an insect and cloning it is time-consuming and delicate work. Breaking open a piece of